One of the most egregious myths of the Third Reich is that those who did not have blonde hair and blue eyes were treated differently. The way these people were treated differently, according to myth, varies dramatically. Many people, especially in Western countries, usually have a vague memory of being told something in history class along the lines of, Hitler wanted to kill everyone without blonde hair and blue eyes, without much explanation of the actual truth behind the matter. And then, this is usually followed up by the people in the class who have these features being pointed out, and a classmate or the teacher themselves saying, Hitler would have loved you. Usually, then someone makes a remark like, haha, Hitler didn't even have blonde hair himself, what an idiot. This opinion is usually only held after childhood by those who have had absolutely no interest in history, however, and for the most part, people inevitably realise that the idea of Hitler wanting to kill those people without blue eyes and blonde hair is insane. So if that isn't true, what actually is the deal with the blonde hair and blue eyes thing in Nazi Germany? Why is it so frequently brought up? Were those without these features persecuted or treated differently? Let's find out. And obviously, quick disclaimer, this is obviously a rather controversial topic, so please use common sense. I will make no opinions of my own in this video, and this is purely a history video, nothing more. Firstly, some context. The National Socialist Movement, from its very inception, was incredibly racial. Adolf Hitler and many of the other most influential men of the NSDAP felt that the German people were taking the wrong path and were losing their racial purity. For example, in Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler spoke of his time in Vienna where he witnessed how dysfunctional the multinational state of Austria-Hungary was. In his view, cultures and peoples simply couldn't mesh like this and that the German people must forge their own path alone. He wanted Germany and Austria to be united as one country so that the Germans could forge their destiny together. Others, like Alfred Rosenberg, took a deeper dive into racial science, and he especially was one that influenced Hitler greatly early on. Rosenberg argued that it was absolutely essential to preserve the German race, and he felt that the races of the world existed almost in a tier system, with the Nordics, Aryans, or whatever other word you'd like to use, at the top. These people being the Scandinavians, the Germans, the Anglo-Saxons across the Anglosphere, as well as the Dutch and the Flemish. Many Germans were sympathetic to such ideas at the time, due to the conditions of the nation. With the new Weimar government came either the greatest freedoms the German nation had ever seen, or a tidal wave of degeneracy, depending on how you view the world. Those with the latter opinion felt that the nation's new experiments with homosexuality, drugs, and even other things going on in Berlin at the time, such as transgenderism, were leading the German people astray. The word that the Germans had for people like these, who they felt were wasting their lives and simply being a drain on society, was Untermensch, literally underman in English, but better translated as subhuman. This title also applied to criminals and the like too. As a reaction to such things, the NSDAP was by its very nature, very racial, and they felt that Germans should fulfill their full potential and that the German people should be kept pure, both in terms of blood and in terms of living an admirable life. This worldview was expressed in propaganda and advertising in a way that isn't too dissimilar to today. In National Socialist propaganda posters, you will very often see people with a distinctly Germanic look. For example, when it comes to men, it is usually a strong, well-built man with sharp facial features. And then, of course, the point of this video, blonde hair and blue eyes. For women, it was much the same in terms of features, and they were displayed in an entirely non-sexualized manner, usually in a mothering role. If your task as a propagandist in the NSDAP is to show off the uniqueness of the German race to your people, and to try to explain to them why it's worth saving it, expanding it, and fulfilling its potential, then why such features were used needs almost no explanation. These are almost uniquely North European features, and if your point is to display your race distinctly from others, then it makes total sense to use such features. To make a modern day comparison, you only need to turn on the TV or get an advert on social media. Maybe you even got one on this video as you clicked on it. In modern Western society, whether you believe this is right or wrong, those in power are trying to create a diverse, accepting society. So to express their point, you will find an extremely disproportionate amount of racial minorities in advertising, or even government propaganda. When family products are advertised, you will usually see a mixed race couple, and the intent is to make people okay with such things. When it comes to acceptance and personal freedom, 
A message is trying to be pushed where it's okay to be overweight or do anything you want really, as long as it doesn't affect other people. In order to push this message, there is usually a lot of very overweight people in advertising. Often a combination of both messages are used and the people used in advertising will be both a racial minority and overweight. The message is to say that you shouldn't judge others and that we should want to live in a diverse world of peoples all living together in harmony. To almost everyone watching this video, the modern comparison should be extremely easy to understand, and if you even take a second to think about it, you can see the logic behind the propaganda. Understanding the National Socialists isn't much harder. In their view, the model German was a strong, blue-eyed and blonde-haired individual. The image may have been somewhat exaggerated, as is our own propaganda today, but this is how it works in every country. Those without blonde hair or blue eyes or both didn't feel marginalized in any way by this message and the core principles of why people were displayed this way was completely understood. In everyday life, you weren't going to be treated differently based on how you looked. After all, every German isn't blonde haired or blue eyed. An example of perhaps where not having such features might be a disadvantage is the SS. The SS we know today was a gigantic million man strong organization, essentially the Reich's second army but this wasn't the case in the beginning. The SS began life as Hitler's bodyguard and was an extremely small and selective group. Only a select few applicants would ever make it in. For example, he needed to be at least 5'9", which was above the average height for the time and also conveniently happened to be Himmler, the leader of the SS's height. He needed to be physically fit, which is obviously normal for any army. However, here is where things are different for the SS. From 1935 onwards, you would need to prove your Aryan genealogy dating back to at least 1800 for enlisted men and 1750 for officer graduates. Nothing of this sort had ever been seen before in any army in the world, but in the SS, the point of the organization was that they would only accept the most pure and ideal looking Germans. Himmler himself used to boast of how he would examine the photograph of every single prospective Waffen SS officer to make sure they had the right level of quote, Nordic features. Blonde hair and blue eyes were at the very top of this list. As well as the physical features, the mental came into play too. Quote, Every pure-blooded German in good health can become a member. He must be of excellent character, have no criminal record, and be an ardent adherent to all National Socialist doctrines. Members of the Hitler Youth will be given preference because their aptitudes and schooling are indicative that they have become acquainted with the ideology of the SS." End quote. When all was said and done, 85% of applicants did not make the cut, and that number was even higher in the SS Liebstandard Adolf Hitler, Hitler's personal SS bodyguard. In this case, even a single dental filling could get you rejected. When the Second World War began, and Himmler was permitted to recruit foreigners into the SS, he immediately got to work on recruiting so-called similarly related peoples into the SS. From here, the stereotypical blonde-haired, blue-eyed strongman propaganda went into overdrive as posters were stuck up all over Scandinavia, the Netherlands and Flanders looking for fellow Aryans to join the cause. In the end, this was fairly effective and the idea of the Germanic peoples fighting together against Bolshevism on the Eastern Front appealed directly to a certain kind of person in each of the occupied nations. Thousands of these people would end up dying on the Eastern Front and many fought right till the end, fighting to defend Hitler in his bunker in the rubble of Berlin in 1945. The SS was certainly an exception, and it was only really here where far more fanatical men about racial science like Heinrich Himmler had power that you'd see such policies about things such as racial purity or your eye colour. As for the incredibly strict bodyguard division, such a thing isn't uncommon in history. Gaddafi had his female bodyguard. The Pope has the Swiss Guard where only single, Catholic, Swiss men between 19 and 30 are accepted. The Byzantines had the Varangian Guard who were primarily Scandinavians and even the pretty liberal Napoleon had incredibly strict rules to get into his imperial guard. Only today do such tough guidelines seem unfair or strange. But as for the blonde hair and blue eyes myth mentioned at the beginning, as you can see, it didn't exist. The simple truth of the matter is that you wouldn't be treated differently depending on your hair and eye colour in the Third Reich. If you were to have blue eyes and blonde hair, then perhaps you are more suitable for propaganda as you looked more like the so-called ideal German in the eyes of men like Heinrich Himmler. But overall, it meant very little. The idea that goes around history classrooms that Hitler planned or did kill people who weren't blue-eyed or blonde-haired is perhaps one of the most insane lies ever told. Thank you very much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there is any other myths you'd like me to discuss, then please do let me know in the comments below so that I can get to them next time. Before I leave you, firstly please leave a like on this video as it helps immensely in the algorithm, and secondly, a gigantic thank you to my Patreon, YouTube and Subscribestar supporters, who as always are keeping this channel, and by extension, me, afloat. If you enjoy this channel, and you'd like to join our Discord, our weekly Hearts of Iron 4 games, or if you'd just like to support the channel, then please do consider signing up in the link in the description. Even the $2 tier helps massively. Also, I now have YouTube memberships set up with exclusive perks, so somewhere on your screen right now, there'll be a button that says you can join if that interests you. Thank you to Lobster to You, Darwe La La Sigmar, Emperor Titus, Luke David Murphy, Chechen Natsok, Anton Berglund, Levi E, Friendly Brian, Mr. Malabar, Bushek, Firefly Enterprise, Henry Unruh, Evan Brightfield, Chef Jeff, Ethan Wynn Stanley, Wunderwaffe, Mr. Bloom, Gav D, Gaius Longanese Hanno, JD, Green Rebel, Angus Roxborough, Rocksacker Too Heavy, Alexios Podcast Watcher, Citadel, Haste, and Bojan M, as well as my members on YouTube, Eric235628, and The Waller, as well as Inflection Point from Subscribestar.